Hey folks, so in light of everything that's happened with Khashoggi, in light of how the Saudi relationship with the United States is in question, I think it's very important that I elaborate on a concept that I've discussed before. Basically, you can view the Obama presidency, the Barack Obama presidency, as Obama being the Napoleon of the 21st century. Now, in what sense do I mean that? Well, back in 1798, when Napoleon was trying to conquer Egypt and Syria, trying to take over the Arab world, the Muslim world, he put out a proclamation proclaiming that he was a Muslim, telling the Arab world that he was a believer in the Quran and in the Prophet, and he was there to restore their rights. And he was going to fight for the Arab peoples and for Islam against the British and against the Turks and against other forces. Now that was, that was back in 1798. And if you look at the presidency of Barack Obama, you can basically see the same strategy being utilized. Wall Street in London wanted to secure their control over the Middle East and make sure that, that various forces, anti-imperialist, socialist, revolutionary forces that had emerged um, in this vitally important and oil-rich you know, section of the world, that those forces were beaten back. So what did they do? They had a president, a president whose middle name was Hussein, a president who had gone to a Muslim school when he was in elementary school living in Indonesia, a president who had met with Edward Said, a president whose biological father was a Muslim, and they put him in there, and conservatives railed against him or constantly accusing Barack Obama of being a secret Muslim. He wasn't. And because of that, many people in the Middle East and in the Arab world believed that Barack Obama was their friend. And then, when the Arab Spring happened, and people were in the streets all across the Middle East, Barack Obama and the U.S. government, coordinating with people like Jared Cohen at Google and some of the heads of, of social media, they were able to manipulate the discontent in 2011 to serve U.S. foreign policy. Ultimately, what happened? Gaddafi, a socialist, anti-imperialist leader of Libya, toppled. Syria, a, a, a Ba'ath Arab socialist country, a center of anti-imperialism, you know, cast into civil war. And basically, we were able to see the United States pull a Napoleon. Barack Obama faked out the Arab world, got them to believe uh, that he was somehow their ally or their friend. And, and through that, they were able to manipulate the Arab Spring of 2011. That's basically what happened in the Obama White House. Imagine what could have happened in 2011 if there had been, say, Donald Trump as president or George W. Bush or someone hated in the Muslim world. It would have gone completely differently, right? Um, the USA was able to engineer and maneuver throughout the Arab Spring by having a leader who kind of faked out the people of the Middle East. And that's very important. And that strategy very much fits in with the overall tactics used by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Soft power. Get other people to fight your battles. People like the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, you know, uh, people like uh, you know, religious groups in different countries to fight your battles for you. Look like the USA is just friendly Mr. Nice Guy up front. Don't forget that speech Barack Obama gave in 2009 where he called for a new beginning with Muslims all over the world in Egypt. That was big, right? That, that essentially the Obama presidency, the Obama presidency was an effort by, you know, the forces that run the United States, Wall Street, London, and all that to manipulate, to manipulate the Arab world in order to bring down anti-imperialist forces. I mean, there was a powder keg brewing with unemployment rising all over the Middle East. And essentially, the, the explosion of anger in the Arab Spring was effectively manipulated to serve U.S. foreign policy, remove an anti-imperialist government in Libya, foment civil war in Syria, because there was a president who faked out the Arab people in the Muslim world. Uh, you know, the fact, you know, what Napoleon did in 1798, pretending to be a friend of the Arab people while he tried to colonize them on behalf of France, is what Obama did in 2008, uh, you know, onward, when he tried effectively to convince the Arab people that he was their friend, that he was a Muslim, as he tried to maneuver on behalf of Wall Street and London. Barack Obama, Barack Obama was the Napoleon of the 21st century.